thank you thank you yeah good evening one and all good evening children this is sucharita we are going to today we are going to learn about the unit 3 uh, hydrosphere in this topic today we are going to learn about the ocean temperature ocean currents and the ocean as a resource before i enter into this in the past previous classes we have been learnt about the rhythms of the ocean hydrological cycle and the different uh, ocean relief structure all this were important now coming into the today's session we are going to learn about the ocean temperature before i enter into the ocean temperature we have to discuss a small topic that it is the earths get heated soon uh, i want to share the screen the earth gets uh, heated soon compared to the water if we see the example when we want to boil any water in a vessel then we'll be seeing that the water gets heated and it takes a little time to get heated and it also takes a little time even to get cooled down so we are going to learn that what are the different factors which are going to affect the water to boil here the fire is affecting it but when it comes to the other parts of the world what is affecting we are going to learn what are the different effects different causes for the different causes for the uh, heating of the water so today we are going to discuss about the unit 3 hydrosphere part 3 so this is a part 3 and this is the last session of our class now what is ocean temperature as just now we have been learned that earth gets heated soon but water gets heated not so soon it takes a little time to uh, heat but what is the the average temperature of the ocean surface water is about 17 degrees celsius how much it will be average approximately 17 degrees celsius at which place 10% of the total volume of the ocean among the 100% this average temperature of the ocean surface water means it is found only on the surface region so there the temperature is 17 degrees then what about the remaining the remaining 90% of the total volume of the ocean is found below the thermocline in the deep ocean it is found below it means it is seen a little below enough so what is changing here the deep ocean oh is it is made up of what it is made up of equal density horizontal layers so here what we are learning that the deep interior part of the ocean is made up of the equal density horizontal layers we'll go to the next now what does the ocean temperature mean in detail so it is ocean temperature is related to the ocean heat content so what does it see it is related to ocean heat content what it is it is heated how it is also an important topic in the study of the global warming so what is a globe globe is our mother earth so that is warming means what does it mean it is getting heated why why it is getting heated because of the pollution and the different poisonous gases which are emitted out from the uh, industries factories and as well as from the all the vehicles and we are burning the toxic materials and the waste things whatever are there all these are things which are making our globe or the earth to become the warm so that this ocean temperature is related to that ocean head contact and when it comes to the coastal sst what does the sst mean is sea surface temperature what it makes it cause offshore winds offshore means away from the shore it causes offshore winds to generate upwelling which can significantly cool or warm nearby land masses so nearby whatever the land masses are there sometimes this offshore winds make them to cool or sometimes it makes them to warm so this is seen where it is seen near the continental shelf so we learnt about the continental shelf in the previous class continental shelf is the first structure or the first part of the relief features of the ocean so because of this sst or the sea surface temperature that continental shelf is becoming often warmer warmer means uh, it is becoming heated often means a little warmer on shore winds in the past we learned about the offshore winds means it is away from the shore now on shore means which is near to the shore these cause a considerable warm up even in the areas where upwelling is fairly constant 
so these onshore winds what they are warm, doing they are warming up what warm, they are warming up the nearby areas which is near to the shore so it is nothing but we can say offshore winds are related to the land breeze and the onshore winds are related to the sea breeze so we'll go to the next in that we we'll learn in detail what does the el nino effect says before i enter into this topic i want to give that why the el nino and la nina are the important topics how they are affecting our india and how what are the effects of it how it is affecting the total pacific ocean region first of all this this el nino and the la nina are these two which are affecting our india uh, especially the southwest monsoon which is we coming to our india in the form of the monsoon rains we know what are the monsoon rains so these are the southwest monsoon rains they come along with the winds which blow from the southwest region of our india and which brings the rains to the total india or the indian subcontinent so these el nino and the la nina these are affecting the indian monsoon winds so what it is happening they are decreasing actually average amount normal average amount of monsoon how much ever we have to receive that is not received because of these two that's why it is affecting how it is affecting us how it is affecting the india especially and how in generally it, it is affecting the pacific ocean region why because it is affected caused by the changes in the temperature in the pacific ocean so where it is uh, happening it is happening in the near to the pacific ocean so the term el nino refers this el nino and la nina these two are the words which are derived from the spanish language and which mean el nino mean a little boy and la nina mean a little girl so these two are derived from the spanish words and it refers what does it refers the large scale ocean atmosphere climate interaction linked to a period warming in sea surface temperatures across the central and the east central equatorial pacific so just now as i told you where it is affecting more it is affecting more near to the pacific region why it is affecting because of the changes which are caused in the temperature near to the pacific region so which are near to the pacific region are mainly affected by this these two A typical el nino effects are likely to develop over north america during the upcoming winter season so this is the winter season in the next two months the winter season is going to increase so that is going to affect the north america it is el nino is going to affect the north america especially during the upcoming winter season in the next sl uh, slide we are going to see that the el nino weather phenomena is gaining strength later global forecast indicate potentially affecting the south west from the june to the september so we india people will receive the monsoon in the from the mid of the june to the mid of the september this season season is called as a monsoon season of india or the rainy season of india then how it is affected actually we have to receive good amount of rainfall but because of this el nino we are not able to receive the normal monsoon rainfall in india it is associated with the lower than that how much ever we have to receive that we are not able to receive because of this el nino weather so it is affecting us so what happens then when the rainfall is less probably it leads to the drought drought or the famine means in the next we will learn that what is drought how the drought is going to affect us severe drought severe drought or the famine mean the we don't find the crops are not uh, cultivated properly if crops are not cultivated properly no rain for no crop no crop then food insecurity comes over here so with this one with a severe drought we are going to face in this way or either it may rain heavily if it rains heavily or because of these two effects then what happens it comes to it leads to the flooding and this rains and flooding both will also create the uh, a problem in another way famine in one way and flooding in one way and the temperature rises due to the el nino so flooding rains food insecurity and severe drought 
all these are the main causes which are brought because of this El Nino. And if this happens, what is going to come along with them? It includes the disease outbreaks, number of diseases come because if the floods recently we have been seen, the Hyderabad have been affected with the floods. Majority, we did not see these floods in these days after a long gap means it has been affected the low-lying areas, the people lost everything in that way. So the floods bring the problem to the people. Not only the problem to the people, it is also a problem to the nation and the state to control it. And malnutrition, we don't get, the people don't get the good food. Heat, heat stress, the heat stress also is going to increase. And the respiratory diseases are going to increase because of this El Nino effect. All these are the problems which are going to be caused and which we have to face. So that's why what we have to do, we should not give a chance to the earth to warm up. We should not uh, send the heat trapping gases into the trans uh, atmosphere. We are sending the heat trapping gases into the atmosphere which makes the earth warm because of this the oceans are getting the temperature is increasing temperature is increasing so it is affecting the oceans when it is affecting the oceans probably it, it affects the human being and the land area so that's why we should be very careful not to such things which makes us bring into the problem and as well as our mother earth also so, El Nino refers to a short term period of warm ocean surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific basically stretching from the South America towards the Australia. So, west of the South America towards Australia, here what do we see? It is a short term period of warm ocean surface temperature, means surface, it is only surface temperature where in the tropical Pacific region. So from where it is stretching, it is stretching from the South America and it is where it is moving, it is moving towards the Australia. So in the next we are going to learn that La Nina, how it is going to affect us. Now we learned about the El Nino. Now what is the effect of the La Nina in the, on the world? So just now we have been told that the name La Nina originates from the Spanish meaning the little girl by the analogy to El Nino meaning the little boy. La Nina is a weather pattern that occurs in the Pacific Ocean. Even this is also occurring where it is occurring near to the Pacific Ocean. In this pattern what is happening strong winds blow the strong winds blow and the warm water at the ocean surface from the South America to Indonesia it moves from the Sur, uh, surface water, ocean surface water is moving from the South America to the Indonesia. In that what we have been learned, it is moving from the South America to the Australia. Here where it is moving, it is moving from the South America to the Indonesia. But what you are seeing here, as the warm water moves west, it is moving, where it is moving? Towards the west. The cold water from the deep rises to the surface. So, when this warm water is moving particularly in a direction of west, what is coming? The cold water is rising up, coming up to the surface near the coast of the South America. Means it is balancing, sometimes it is balancing the situation over here. It will be happening. So, in the next what we learn here, how it is affecting us. All La Nina is a weather pattern that occurs in the Pacific Ocean. So just now we have been went through the same topic, uh, same uh, uh, sentences that it is affecting us through the strong blow, uh, blowing winds. Here, this is a phenomena that describes cooler than the normal ocean surface temperatures in the eastern and the central Pacific Ocean region close to the equator of the west coast of South America. So especially it is affecting the regions which are near to the Pacific Ocean, that is the west of the South, Af uh, South America, and uh, the regions which are near to the equator uh, below the Asia, the Asian countries, some of the Asian countries which are near to the equator like Indonesia, the southern part of uh, the India, southern part of the India and when it comes to that even the other continent called the Australia. So these are affected. Why? Because as they are located or present near to the Pacific Ocean. So it is affecting these regions. In some parts of the world, La Nina caused increased rainfall. So what it is creating, either it increases the rainfall, means it may lead to the floods or it decreases the rainfall that may lead to the drought or the famine. So we are suffering either with the heavy rainfall or either with the less rainfall which is affecting us. 
so then next we are going to learn about the vertical distribution of temperature so how this vertical distribution of temperature is also going to affect us okay we have horizontal vertical now we are talking about the vertical distribution how it is affecting the average rate of temperature decreases upward in the troposphere so we have been learnt about the different layers in the atmosphere if we go with the lesson of atmosphere we learn the different layers the first layer of the atmosphere is the troposphere as we are going up towards the troposphere for every 165 meters 1 degree centigrade of the you uh, know uh, temperature will decrease so here they gave 6 degrees celsius they is decreasing for 1 kilometer i told for 165 meters so approximately 165 to 167 between i am saying you so mean what does it mean for every 1 kilometer of height we are going above into the troposphere it decreases 6 degrees of temperature so it is affecting in that way and not only that this vertical gradient of temperature is commonly referred it is commonly called as standard atmosphere so what this gradient temperature is commonly called as standard atmosphere and how it is differing it differs from the place to the place like based on the height change of the season winds ocean currents unequal distribution of the lands latitudes etc so all these are the different regions which are uh, affected based for the vertical distribution of the temperature so these all are coming that's why as we go so if you are uh, standing on the top of the hill we feel cool enough if you are standing at the foot of the uh, hill then it is hot enough if you take the example of tirupati only top of the hill it is cool when we come down then it will be hot enough so that is the difference based on the height change of the season so rainy season winter season and when it comes to summer based on the season based on the winds based on the ocean currents and unequal distribution of land like maybe plain plateau mountain hill canyon all these things are there and latitudes as we know all these are the main reasons based on all these the vertical distribution of temperature differs from the place to the place next in the next what we are going to learn about the ocean currents so up to now we learnt about the ocean temperature and the vertical distribution of the temperature now we are entering into the ocean currents what ocean currents what are the ocean currents in general it is a movement of the mass of water in a fair defined direction over a great distance so it will be moving how it is moving in a particular direction in a direction in a particular movement from one place to the another or in a definition form if we take uh, and up to now I told in a general way it is a definition that an ocean current is a continuous it won't stop it is a continuous directed movement of seawater generated by the number of forces so the other force is affecting to move that water the water does not move automatically so how it is moving the other forces are applied over there what are they acting upon the water including winds so winds are affecting the Coriolis effect I'll say what is Coriolis effect I'll say Coriolis effect breaking waves cabling and temperature and the salinity differs all these are the reasons which make us to see the continuous movement of the sea water that continuous movement of the sea water or the ocean water in a particular direction is called as a ocean current so what does a Coriolis effect mean what it is it is a main cause of the coriolis effect is the earth's rotation so we know earth has two movements rotation and the revolution this coriolis effect is mainly uh, caused because of this earth's rotation and why because every object will move very freely on the surface but it can't move so easily or uh, uh, the move the earth moves east under the object as a faster speed so what i want to say is as the latitude increases the speed of the earth's rotation decreases 
the latitude increases means from the 0 to the 1 1 to the 2 as it is increasing the speed of the rotation is decreasing so what it affects that's why the Coriolis effect effect is seen over here and the term current describes the motion of the ocean motion means movement as per the physics we say motion means movement or the social also we can say the same ocean currents are driven by the wind water density differences and tides. What is a tide? The rhythmic rising and falling of the sea water or the ocean water is called as a tide. We have two types of tides, spring tides and the neap tides. So now this is a picture of ocean currents. If you observe here, we find two colors. One is a cold and one is a hot. Cold with the blue color and a hot with the red color. So probably we can understand where we find warm ocean currents near to the equator. Where do we find cold ocean currents? Near the polar region. Maybe the north polar region or the south polar region. So what do we see here? That they are moving from one direction to the another direction or from one location to the another or from one place to the another. So the arrow indicates that which side they are moving. And here they are showing us clearly what are they named. So if you observe near the North America, on the west of the North America, if you see Alaska, it is in red in color. Red in color, hot. It is hot ocean current. When it comes to the Labrador, blue ocean current. North Atlantic drift, it is. And Gulf Stream. Canary, North Equatorial Current, Equatorial Counter, South Equatorial Ocean Current. So these are the Norwegian names of them. South Atlantic Ocean Current. So based on the place and based on the direction, they are named with the different names as where they are moving. Sometimes as it is beside, like if we see the South America there, the Brazil. As the Brazil country is located over there near the Brazil, ocean current is going on near the Peru, the one ocean current. Here Brazil said if we observe it is red in color. In the simultaneous when you go to the Peru, the other side west of the Peru, uh, South America, it is blue in color. See the difference among them. So this is the world map which says about the different ocean currents and, and the, their names in which direction they are moving from where to where it is moving all these are seen in this map and one more thing we have to learn in this is there is a small difference between the stream and the drift if you observe near the north america there they gave gulf stream beside only we see the north atlantic drift why it is called as a stream and why it is called as a drift when the speed the ocean water current which flows speedily is called as a stream Gulf Stream means how it is moving? It is moving very fastly. That's why it is called as a stream. And name as it is a Gulf region, it is called as a Gulf Stream. And when it comes to drift, it is moving slowly. So that's why it is called as a drift. When it flows very fastly, it is called as stream. When it flows very slowly, it is called as a drift so on which factors they are affected how these ocean currents are formed so who are going to affect or what are the main causes or the or the factors which are the uh, main caused uh, caused because uh, the ocean currents why they are caused what are the main factors now we are going to see in the next what are the main causes or the factors which are affecting before that types of currents so generally we may think that warm ocean current and the uh, cool ocean current. But here one more thing also is there in this that two are there. What are they? One is a surface ocean current means we can see only up to the surface means continental shelf up to the depth of the continental shelf. And what is the remaining deep water current means the 90% which is deep inside that is a deep water current. One is surface current. And the second is the deep water current. And how the people are using the ocean currents to explore the earth. As we know, since the ancient times, the people started exploring the earth, discovering new places, islands, countries, and they started going to the different places. As we know about the Vasco da Gama, who have been discovered over India, the sea, new sea route to the India in the 1498 AD. So how could we know? 
because of him only we every the whole world knew about the india like this the people started using the ocean currents to explore the earth and different parts of the earth and not only that ocean currents affect the shipping industry so we can develop the shipping industry because of that commercial and recreational fishing the fishing as we know the ocean has a good source of different type of aquatic animals especially different type of fishes so we will go to just enjoy fishing recreational means we want to recreate ourselves but commercial commercial mean for the purpose of money it is enough uh, like a business which we are doing here and the recreational navigation for the boats navigation means we are moving from one place to the other place through boats or the ships having updated information if we have the updated information of the ocean currents then what we can do without we can safely move to the any place or any coast wherever we want so nowadays this updated information is helping us so coming to the next what we are going to observe there surface ocean current so just we have been learned two types of ocean currents are there this is the surface ocean current what is the next deep inside the next is the deep inside so then in the next picture the world map we are going to observe the uh, same uh, ocean currents which are moving towards different continents so especially which we find over here uh we can see the same blue color and the red color so probably as we know the blue is the cold ocean currents uh and the red is the warm ocean currents so if you observe you can clearly understand where it is moving from which place to the which place so the arrow mark indicates where do they start and where do they end okay so as it is uh, there is no end it is a continuous process see if you observe here you can see the ocean current how it is moving on the sea or the ocean you can see the movement clearly okay children so in the next we are going to learn that by moving heat from the equator towards the poles ocean currents play an important role in controlling the climate why because in the frigid zone that is near the polar regions the temperature is very cool and when it comes down we will we'll see that the temperature is very hot near the equator so if it is too hot near the equator is also unbearable if it is too cool near the frigid zone that is a polar region also unbearable so that's why it is managing or balancing that this warm ocean currents move towards the poles and the cool polar region from the polar region cool ocean currents come and join to the, uh, come towards the equator means there they are that's why it is uh, ocean currents are playing a very vital role in controlling the climate so ocean currents also critical uh, they are critically very important for the sea life so many different type of aquatic animals or different type of animals are living in the seas and oceans then how these ocean currents are helping them they are helping them by carrying the nutrients means food different type of nutritious food to those organisms especially to those organisms example fish it moves throughout the water wherever it is but some animals are there which stay in a particular place they stick to one place then how do they get food this ocean currents will provide them the food and not only that it also carries reproductive cells that is the eggs which are laid down by the fishes or any other organisms they'll move along with the water ocean currents and they'll go to the new places so new life of ocean uh, ocean life is seen in the new places so ocean currents are helping us in this way the next we are going to learn the here especially if you observe this is a north america map north america map with the warm currents and the cool currents so if you observe here on the left hand side we can see alaska current below uh, we can see california and when it comes uh, when it comes the labrador current north atlantic current gulf stream below if you go a little down gulf stream so these are the important uh, ocean currents which are found or which are located surrounding the north america so these are the ocean currents of the north america in the next we are going to see the ocean currents of the australia and the ocean currents of the southern part of the africa not the whole africa the southern part of the africa we are going to see here so here if we observe 
if you observe the australia we can find only one single color red because the australia is near to the equator that's why only what do we see warm ocean currents when it comes to the southern part of the africa what do we observe so here we are observing the different names what do we observe here uh, we see the blue color means cool so the southern part of the africa comes under the cool climatic conditions as it is uh, coming uh, down so so it is uh, means in so, some of the places we find cool warm, uh, warm ocean currents and in some of the places we find the cool ocean currents so in the next we are going to learn that how many types of ocean currents are there ocean currents are sometimes also called as the ocean rivers these ocean currents are also called as the ocean rivers and ocean currents may be classified based on the temperature so based on the temperature we are classifying it into two parts one is the warm ocean cold ocean currents and the warm ocean currents just now we have been seen in those maps that what color it has been indicated over there and generally warm currents flow towards the poles means from the equator to the poles and what about the old ocean current cold ocean currents they move from the polar region to the equator so this is a difference between these two and it is uh, helping us to control the climate if you observe this red color the warm ocean currents are moving towards the polar region and the blue colored cool ocean currents are coming towards the equator so if you can observe so how they are coming and they are becoming warm and again going back so it is a continuous process okay from the cool regions it comes to the warm region and from the warm region it comes goes back to the cool region here if you can if you observe this map clearly you can identify all the important ocean currents which are located and present on the world or that is on our earth surface here they have been shown us clearly if you observe so mainly we observe uh, near between the north america africa europe and the uh, south america so if we observe we find more number of ocean currents here below our india north equatorial equatorial count south equatorial here if we find and when it comes to the australia it comes under the uh, east australia and the west australia so they are showing with the two different colors so this map says us or explains us the clear information of all the important ocean currents which are found on the earth surface coming to the next we observe the centrifugal force so before i enter into the centrifugal force i want to say that these are the four factors are there which are going to cause or which are going to affect the ocean currents what are they first is a centrifugal force second is the effect of the winds third is the precipitation and the fourth is the solar energy first we'll go to the centrifugal force what does the centrifugal force mean so what is centrifugal force this centrifugal force at the equa equator is greater than that at the poles the centrifugal force is more at equator and less when we compare it with the poles because the great circles at the time of the revolution coincide with the equator so how can we see the difference there the great circles will be coinciding means they are mingling with each other at that time when uh, when the revolution is taking place and the variation of these forces make the equatorial water to move towards the poles and this what it is making it is making the equatorial means the re, where the equator is there from there the water is moving towards the poles this centrifugal force is uh, helping the water to move from the equatorial region to the polar region and this uh, coriolis effect i told you before only that uh, uh, it is based on the rotation uh, this effect is causing the winds and the currents to form the circular patterns so centrifugal force is a one of the factor which affects the ocean currents second is the uh, effect of the winds so how the effect of winds is there the effect of winds stresses the stresses due to the wind and the wind movement modifies the direction of the currents so wind movement okay the stress which is on the wind and as well as the wind movement both of them is modifying the direction of the current so these two makes the current to move in a particular direction based on that direction only some of the names are named over here 
So, ocean currents acts much like a conveyor belt. We know what is a conveyor belt. It is continuously moving. What it, how, what it is doing by moving, transporting the warm water and precipitation from the equator towards the poles and the cold water from the poles to the tropics. That is the equatorial region. So, it is continuously. Just now, we have been seen in that picture that the cool water is coming. They will change into warm and moving back. So, it is a conveyor belt. It is a continuous process which is going on. If you see that the wind at the speed of 50 miles per hour will produce. If that wind is blowing with the 50 miles per hour, then it is going to produce how much velocity of ocean current? It would be only 0 0.75 miles per hour. So, the speed of the wind is 50 miles, but the current ocean current's velocity is speed is only 0 0.75 miles. So, next is the precipitation. How it is affecting the precipitation? The equatorial areas receive the greatest rainfall. As we know, that's why we'll be observing the Africa map. Where the equatorial region is there in the Africa, there we find the equatorial evergreen forest because it receives continuous uh, main, uh, more rainfall in that region. In the total equatorial region in the world, it receives more rainfall. Hence, what is happening? The sea level is higher over there. So, where the sea level is more and the where the evaporation is more, there only the precipitation is also more. Ocean currents are driven by three main factors. So, what are they? The rise and fall of the tides. So, the tides will be rising and falling. And tides create a current in the oceans which are the strongest near the shore and in bays and estuaries along the coast. So, they are very strong near the shores, strong near the bays and as well as near along the coast. Next comes in that only winds. Winds drive winds drive and uh, winds also help and thermohaline circulation. So, these are the three which are helping us in the press, uh, how to it, how it does it affect the ocean current. If you observe this thermohaline circulation, so what does the thermohaline mean? Thermohaline is a movement of the seawater in a pattern of flow depending on the variations in the temperature which give rise to the change of salt content. So, that is called as the thermohaline circulation. So, if you observe here also we see three colors red surface flow that is surface ocean currents, blue deep flow and purple is the totally deepest flow. Here we can understand because of these three colors. Coming to the next solar energy, the last factor which is affecting the ocean currents. So, how this is affecting? The sun warms up the parts of the ocean. So, the sun warms up the whole surface of the earth in that land is there and water also is there. So, it is affecting the warm uh, oceans also. How water Warm waters rise just like the warm air rises. So, the air which is near to the earth will become warm when the sun rays falls on the earth. Then the land gets heated and the air in the same area, the air also gets heated. When that, it, that uh, air gets heated, that air will go up. It rises up. The warm air rises up. In the same way, warm water also rises up. Warm air rises up as well as even the warm water also rises up. As the warmer ocean waters begins to rise in a particular area, the cooler ocean waters from the different area will move in to replace the warmer ocean currents. We have been observed in that um, uh, picture that how the warm ocean currents are going and Moving, uh, moving towards the polar region and when it goes towards the polar region, it changes into the cool. When it comes towards the equatorial region, they are changing into the warm. So, it is cycle growing on. It is replacing. When the water gets warm, then the cool water is coming and joining and make it cool again. Then again, this process goes on. The ocean water is about 8 centimeters higher in level near the equator than in the middle latitudes. If we observe, the ocean water is more near the equator when we compare to the other middle latitudes. So, these are the four factors which are affecting the ocean water or the ocean currents coming to the ocean as a resource. So, how is a ocean useful to us? Ocean is useful to us in the different ways or different forms. 
First, most life on the earth is under the water. The majority different kinds of organisms, living organisms, aquatic animals, different types of fishes, turtles, tortoise, like that, many living organisms are living underneath the water. Not only that, human beings are depending on the oceans for their food. Yes, we get a lot of seafood from them. Since now, no, since the ancient period, we are depending upon the seas and the oceans for our food. And oceans provide abundant food resources like fish and the salt. We get fish from the uh, oceans and as well as the salt also, which we learned that it is a long lengthy process with the evaporation it forms. And oceans also provide us with the germs and the pearls. These are the very valuable germs which are found underneath pearls. We know that how it forms underneath the water it is a process it goes on so it also gives us the precious minerals also and we have created our civilization on its shores and traded across the world so as we know many civilizations are there indus valley civilization egyptian civilization like this all these civilizations were how it have been created it have been created by doing the trade with all the different parts of the world like our india we have a lot of trade with the different countries in the ancient period even now also and how the ocean is helpful to us see if you observe these pictures this is a bombay high the right side picture is showing you the bombay high where from where we get the crude oil and this from this crude oil we'll get the petrol diesel lpg kerosene all this we get from them and we are using them for the different purpose when we go to the next here the ocean one of the earth's most valuable natural resource how it provides food in the form of fish and the shellfish about 200 billion pounds are caught each year every year how much fish we are catching here we are catching about 200 billion pounds amount we are catching and we are selling it to the different parts we are sending it to the par different parts of the world in the form of the important export business the trade is going on and it is mined for the minerals we also get minerals from them like we get salt we get sand we get gravel and manganese copper nickel iron cobalt all these are found deep in the sea and most valuable mineral resource which we extract from the ocean are the petroleum products like the oil and the natural gas also these two are also found underneath the ocean when it comes to the next what we are going to get more from the ocean so we are also producing or generating the electricity with the help of the ocean waves so if you observe here those are the ocean waves in a particular ocean and it is generating the power or the electricity we are using the ocean waves also to produce the electricity when we go to the next it is used for the transportation who are transporting both the shipping traveling from one place means not only people even the goods are also transported from one place to the another place with the help of the oceans that's why the oceans are called as a natural highways they are the natural not man-made it is naturally highways which are made by the nature and which we are using for our purpose and it provides a treasured source of the recreation for humans so for recreation to relax ourselves we'll go near to the beaches ocean shore seashore and we enjoy the vacation and we come back it is also helpful to us for the uh, in that way and it is also helpful to us that the 10 percent of the protein food comes from the oceans only which we are taking the human beings whatever the protein food we are taking that among the whole the 10 percent is from the ocean only so when you observe here see they have been catching number of fishes and this will be traded from the one country to the another country when we go to the next what do we observe here that ocean water is not fit for drinking we may feel thirsty but can we drink that ocean water? No, because it consists of high salt content. In the previous class, we have been learned that PPT or PPM. So, uh, that we have been parts per million or the parts per thousand. How much it contains? 10,000 to 35,000 as per the parts, uh, parts per 
millions here it is millions not for the thousands so of dissolved salts are there which makes the ocean water to become saline or the salty that's why we can't use this water for the irrigation nor for the drinking but some other uh, in other ways we are using them such a large amount of the salt can cause dehydration if used for drinking purposes if unfortunately when we went into the water if we drink some little water which comes into our mouth then what happens it leads to dehydration because it consists of more number of or large amount of salt so in the next what do we see that how we are affecting how we are exploiting the ocean how we are uh, uh, making the ocean um, what do you say uh, how we are exploiting it and how we are killing some of the animals and why the way some of the animals are disappearing and how why how we are making the oceans to become the dumping yards of the plastic and the toxic waste oceans have also fallen the victim to our exploitation how many large fishes like whales have been disappearing so day by day what is happening some animals are disappearing as we are exploiting it more and what is happening oceans also became dumping ground for the plastic and other forms of the toxic waste how we are polluting so we are polluting the whole earth surface we are not leaving the land nor even we are not leaving the water also so if you observe see near the sea or the ocean how much waste material is dumped here who are doing this we human beings no animal is destroying the earth's surface or the earth's water no animal is polluting only the human being is polluting only the human being is making the problem so what i say is so please children don't pollute our earth and don't pollute the water please conserve please save our mother earth our planet where we have the only and only source of life over here to survive no other planet is there to survive so what we have been learnt up to now we have been learnt about the ocean temperature we have been learnt about the different types of the ocean currents and ocean as a resource as a resource natural resource how we are using them so with this topic i have i am ending my session i thank you one and all who have been supported me and special thanks to the jani sir and the venkat reddy sir who have been supported me encouraged me a lot and thanks to one and all everyone thanks a lot